Nigerian banks have been in the spotlight for most of this year, perhaps for the wrong reasons. Mark, um, the banks are down about 30% year to date compared to the market, which is down just about 18%. And of course, Q3 numbers are what uh, most analysts are looking to perhaps um, provide a catalyst for the banking sector, more so because we've seen the resolution of the rescued banks. Joining me in the studio to give me his thoughts on the numbers that we should be expecting is Bumi Ashaolu, Head of Research at FBN Capital. Thanks a lot, Bumi, for joining us on the show today. Thank you. First of all, give us your thoughts on what you think will be the key takeaways from the Q3 numbers. We saw in Q2 higher net interest margins, which for many banks was positive. What are your thoughts uh, for Q3? What will be the key takeaways in your view? For us, we expect that there will be um, people will go away with you know, improvements in the underlying results. Mm. There would likely be some distractions. Um, some banks would probably may even post losses, like a diamond, for example. Um, it could happen in Q3 or Q4. But I think if you strip out what we can call um, the random um, one-off uh, events, the underlying results should improve. So if you analyze the ROEs, the H2 or Q3 analyzed ROE versus the H1 should be high by maybe about 50 basis points. So that's the key thing we're looking for. It's coming a much more positive story, obviously. I saw your notes, you're calling it fundamentals are due to assert themselves when the Q3 numbers come out. So I think there's a lot of general optimism about the banking sector. What are your thoughts on um, valuations particularly now? Where we are and what impact you think the Q3 numbers would have on those on, on bank stocks? Sure. I mean, there's a chart that we put in our note, as you referred to, just um, getting people to focus back on what are stocks trading on in the banking sector today versus what they were doing in uh, 2009 and 2010. So a range, minimum, um, average, and, and maximum. And you find that for most of these banks, the healthy banks anyways, um, those multiples, price book multiples, are equal to or below the 2010 averages. Yeah. Now, the outlook for the banking sector this year is much better than it was in 2010 or 2009. So those multiples don't make that much sense where they're trading at today. Now, mm -hmm. there are reasons why they are where they are, but what, what we're saying is that if you have a long-term view, medium to long-term view, um, you should have banks within your, um, you should begin to overweight banks in your portfolio. Yeah. And of course, some of those reasons are the negative news flow from global, the global front and of course concerns about the economy, particularly with fiscal laxity in Nigeria. But what, in your views, would be, is, well, it might be a funny question to think of the surprises when the event hasn't happened yet, but which banks do you think might give us some positive or negative surprises in this? Um, um, I, I'm not sure about... I, I th well, positive, su positive surprises. I I'm not sure that people will be necessarily looking to that. I think investors will be looking for some reassurance. If we get numbers that people can't argue that they're good or they're fine, mm -hmm. then that's almost as good as a <laughs> positive um, um, surprise. I think w it's likely that we'll still see some um, uh, impact of is, is the sale of some loans to um, Amcon, for example, Zenon, for some banks. Right. That, that may cause a bit of concern but again we're getting to the very end of, of this uh, NPL saga and mm. I think everybody's grateful for that. Mm. Well the, obviously there is consensus that the market is cheap at least for the banks um, but when do you think we will see that sustained move upwards? We know obviously there are, there are global factors weighing on the market right now and but the key thing for me is when the locals begin to be major players in this market. Yes, the, the way the, well, as you said, fiscal laxity, all those things, they've not helped. But if you're a liquid bank, um, you may lose a little bit on the volume side because borrowers may not want to borrow as much mm -hmm. um, if the interest rates that the banks are charging them go up. But remember that the prime lending rate actually hasn't gone up that much, regardless of what the interest rates uh, have done. Um, but the banks will gain it back in, on the liquid assets that they have. Um, mm -hmm. As we've seen with some of these banks in Q2 like Zenith. So um, I think in the short term, the bigger banks appear to be maybe where to go. But if you have a very long term view, 2012 will play much better for some of the stocks that have been beating down because their results just look really bad like right now, like maybe Diamond or UBA. That, mm. that, that's the message that we're basically putting out. And which banks, are those the banks you think will outperform next year? Yeah, well, because if you look at Diamond, for example, um, Diamond will most likely post a 1.9 billion loss <laughs> in PBT in the second half. Now, is that a surprise? No, we know that's coming. But in 2012, if they do anything close to what they've told the market, once the legacy NPLs die off, um, something like 14% ROE, mm. it will be very difficult for an investor not to take notice of that number. Mm. Quick point on what I'm calling sector-wide phenomena, higher interest rates and bonds. I, I remember 
in some interviews about six months ago, some people were um, a bit concerned about the bank's exposure to bonds, and as yields go up, if there are some losses that are being recorded in the in the balance sheet. What are your thoughts on sector? This obviously we're, we're expecting even in today's MPC, the general views that we're going to see a rate hike. What are you? What are your thoughts on the impact of this on the sector as a whole? Yes, I mean, I, I sort of hinted at it before slightly. Yes, there's some concerns on that, but if you ensure that you're not too exposed to just bonds, if you have um, some money market instruments, right, mm. uh, you pick up whatever you're going to lose on maybe reduced volumes on um, on lending or, you know, the market to market potential losses on some of these bonds. So um, I, I would be very surprised if a bank is um, extremely overweight just bonds. Um, mm. the, I would expect that their books reflect a bit of a mix of all these these assets. And maybe one final point. I think if you look at this sell-off that we've been talking about, um, if you compare the consumer stocks right, uh, with the banks, the consumer stocks that are owned by multinational uh, companies, they've actually done quite well this year. So it, it sort of flies in the face of this global contagion issue, uh, that, the reason that people have been talking about. So if you're a bank that um, you're doing very well on your earnings, I think gradually people begin to warm back to you. 